Welcome to Spoiler Kings. My name is Stan Kramer. I'm with Will, Peppa MD. Um, so if you're watching live, we already did one trailer on our double feature or one review on our double feature Monday. Uh, now we're on our second one. And this one, we're going to do The Bubble um, streaming now on Netflix. Um, so you didn't have to go anywhere. Most people, everyone has Netflix. So uh, yeah. let's just get this one going, man. So Will's going to give us a quick breakdown of what this movie's about as we watch the trailer. It's going to be so quick. Um, yeah. So, uh, pretty much, we have the movie The Bubble. Um, it's a 2022 movie. Uh, the movie that it says on the interweb says it's about sneaking out, hooking up, and melting down. The cast and crew of a blockbuster action franchise attempts to shoot a sequel. And when I say sequel, this is like part six movie. Which, you know, Somewhere. how those movies kind of go. Those are just recycled trash at that point. Um, of a movie called Cliff Beasts. <laughs> so it's like yeah. Cliff Beasts 6. Um, they try to shoot a sequel. And this is during the pandemic. The, the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's right dead in the middle. Before there's a vaccination. Although one of the crew members gets it early, apparently. Um, <laughs> and they're quarantining at a posh hotel. Now, this hotel has, like, five active staff members. So that's five people doing the jobs of, like, I don't know. I haven't worked at a hotel, but I'm, I'm sure it's, like, a few hundred or, like, a good, you know, 70, 80 people working on one shift. So mm -hmm. anything that you need, they're all – first, they're all quarantined for, like, two weeks. And then as soon as they're done quarantine and they attempt to make this movie, they got the green screens, they have all the things that they need to make this featured film with flying dinosaurs that have no yeah. feathers, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought I thought you needed feathers to fly. But anyways, um, it's a, it's kind of like a, um, like a parody type. It's not a parody, but it's a parody type movie about the pandemic and what actors and actresses went through um, not being able to really work um, in the film industry. That's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, during the, the pandemic, what, what do you expect to happen? You got a bunch of people that are watching hella, you know, binge watching movies. They're trying to make TikTok videos, um, doing drugs, trying to fly airplane or helicopters with little to no experience. It's just a chaotic movie of what you would think would happen during the pandemic, mid pandemic, mind you. So there's yeah. no, no vaccine yet. Um, you have, a, you know, influencers like the one shown right there and yeah, it's a crazy, crazy movie. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Oh, add anything to what the movie is uh, about? Oh, no, man, that's that's pretty on the head without getting getting too spoilery. Um, yeah, yeah, it was just making a sequel during the pandemic. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they they I don't think they. Oh man, really? Uh, if you want to keep it going, the more yeah, crash. I gotta. So like the the cast features a lot of stars, a lot. Um, we got. I don't know some of these. So we have Leslie Mann that plays uh, Lauren Van Chance. We have Pedro Pascal. Fucking big, big name. We got David, I can't say his last name, Duchovny. Oh, Duchovny. David Duchovny. We have, wait, he was actually in this movie? I thought it was just his face. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess they, I guess you have to give him credit, right? Because they deep faked yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> I guess he, he wasn't actually in the movie movie, really. They just used like a face filter, I guess, because they were on drugs. Um, oh, yeah. we got Keegan Michael Key, who's always hilarious, he never has an off button. Uh, we have the one playing the director in the movie is played by Fred, I can't say his name either, Ar Armisen. Armisen. Yeah, uh, he plays Darren, uh, Eigen. Uh, we got Goose Khan. We got Kay McKinnon, who's like top executive uh, type person running the whole project. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Harry. Tri I can't say any of these names, bro. Harry Trevaldwin. Yeah. I think yeah. I got that one right. Yeah, that's about well, right. <laughs> um, Rob Delaney. That was in. Yeah. Uh, 
what's that movie called? Deadpool. I don't know from any other movies mm-hmm. too much. Um, and, and a few other kind of big stars. Um, and so stacked cast, very stacked. Cast. Of course, you have to. This is a movie made about Hollywood actors and actresses. So it makes sense to have just a giant cast. Daisy Ridley. <laughs> is this a Brian? Daisy Ridley was was a funny scene. Yeah, Daisy Ridley was in it. Which was Daisy Ridley? Uh, she was Ray from Star Wars, from the new Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's who she is. You know, that's what she's famous for. But she doesn't play that yes. character in this one. But that's who, no, yeah, no, no. who she is. Yeah, she has, she has a she has a, a, a couple scenes in here. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, this is uh. That's what it's all about. It was, um, but John Cena had an appearance in this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just so, so many famous people. <laughs> like, yeah. like, so many. And they just kept kind of popping up in random spots and stuff like that. It was really funny. Uh, Brian said, don't forget the loss of phalanges. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't want to get into spoilers, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, some finger loss. You get uh, lost, yeah. Um, Kate McKinnon was was pretty awesome. Um, oh man, yeah. There's just so so many freaking people in this movie. Um, but yeah, I guess you know since we're talking about that, that's for me one of the good parts was definitely the the cast. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, what's her name from uh, um, Karen Gillian, Like you said, the main character, but uh, uh, Maria Back Back uh, Lava. She was in Bow Rat. Like she kind of made her debut in Bull Rat. Oh, she, that is her. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Iris, uh, Crystal, Crystal um, was the TikTok chick. That was uh, okay. um, Leslie Mann, who's in this one. Leslie Mann um, and uh, and Judd Apatow, which I believe was a director or producer. That's their daughter, like real life. Oh, you know, no in, shit. In the movie. Yeah. So awesome. that, was, that was pretty cool, too. Um, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's just there's there's so many like people in this movie that was just really really f- funny, you know. So, but I think that's kind of where it stays. It's just this the random moments that yes. were really funny, you know, like like the TikTok dances, you know, uh, Crystal dancing with the dinosaur <laughs> was so stupid. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, yeah. There's just a bunch of like weird stuff that happened that was funny. I, I liked the uh, Howie, which was uh, uh, Goose Khan, uh, his character. He was all weird and like he wind up running away at part of the movie, <laughs> like he couldn't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, yeah, it was just a full cast. They had funny moments. Um, honestly, the graphics in the fake movie in the movie was not bad <laughs> like like there's the part in the trailer where uh let me see if i can sh- show it again where like the people hanging from the the lines were two dinosaur people and they <laughs> were just uh <laughs> oh shit i missed it um and they're just like hanging there talking to each other <laughs> and i thought that was hilarious <laughs> they do this cgi even though it's like the people eventually they cut to them actually like hanging on the wire and stuff but they keep this in and this whole scene of them climbing up the mountain and then you know you know they went up getting sick and like leslie man like this falls off and she's hanging there spinning <laughs> but they keep the background and the cgi stuff i'm like that's funny it's yeah. it's really like goofy, funny kind of stuff. Like the dinosaur dragon things talking to each other with British accents. Funny. <laughs> so um yeah, so yeah, Judd Apatow was the director. Okay. And then Different. Leslie Mann is there, is his wife. I think they're still married. Um but yeah, then one of their kids is in the movie too. So Jesus. Talk about connected. Um so yeah, what, what were some of the good things you liked about it? <coughs> so uh, kind of piggybacking off of what you said, um, this movie was filled with a lot of funny moments that didn't exactly link up together. It didn't like. OK, so the good things that I liked were the funny moments. There was a lot of like bits that were just gold. Yes. They were just so funny. Right. To the point where I'm like laughing hysterically. Um, I think probably my favorite scene 
I, I might have other ones, but the one that th- that comes to mind right now is when at some point they're all just losing their shit. They're kind of spoiler alert. They're kind of um kind of held there against their will at some point. Um, yeah. so you know what else can you do when you're during a pandemic? They start doing drugs, hardcore drugs. They start like. Um, someone like sniffs a line off of Keegan Michael Key's bald head. That was <laughs> yeah. so funny to me. Um, Pedro Pascal, in my opinion, really carried this movie. He didn't even have the biggest parts, really, but he just <laughs> he plays like this disconnected, emotionally disconnected kind of character. You know, Hollywood ass dude um, that doesn't really give a shit. But he starts to like fall for um, <laughs> Annika. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's in the trailer. That's in the trailer. That David McDuff is sniffing cocaine off. <laughs> Keep That's it. hilarious. Keep <laughs> and um, yeah, man. Uh, Pedro Pedro Pesca, who plays Dieter Bravo, um, he just he really did it for me in this movie. He really had funny moments where I didn't even know he could do funny. I didn't know he could do comedy, but. That man needs to like expand his branches out there to what he can do. Um, I just kept oh, I I kept laughing at the the director of this movie, who's played by Fred Armisen. Uh, he plays Darren Eigen. He he has like long hair. He looks really really wonky. I don't know how to describe him, but he just looks he looks off. He looks like the creek. I don't know where he has a scene where like he sneaks up on one of the actresses in a pool and right. starts swimming up to her. And he's just so weird, <laughs> yeah. but it worked he, for him. Yeah. He's good at him. that stuff. He's he, yeah, he's good at creepy weird. He is. He, he definitely gives that vibe. Um, he has a lot of good moments. I liked how, <laughs> again, all, all of these are just random moments. They, they, they don't like really add to the progression of the movie or the story of the plot. But Kigo Michael Key, would just made me laugh so much. He in the, he was only, I guess, contracted to do the movie as long as he got to ride a helicopter, and he was only given like eight classes. So <laughs> he only knew how to go up and down with the helicopter he didn't know how to go forward or backward oh, yeah. and so they kind of show that off in the movie and at some point they need him to to ride the helicopter to like you know somewhere i'm not going to say where but they need him to go and he's just he's just flowing up in the air <laughs> oh my god and he's all hyped he's like all like like yeah right he's like yeah yeah let's do it and then like everyone's like hey like move this thing what are you doing and he's like i don't know man i only have eight classes on me and then at some point you know someone gets the bright idea to to pull up a youtube video (laughs) of how to fly a helicopter it's just man so many good moments in this movie so many good funny bits it really reminded me of like a bunch of snl skits just put together that's what it reminded me yeah yeah um so had funny not not even one liners but funny bits to the movie that's something that really um was a plus cast was stacked and and yeah i agree cgi was decent uh what about you yeah. anything else you want to pick up on good stuff uh no uh real quick brian said it was a weird bizarre movie i liked it mostly for all the awkward moments so same same thing what we're saying yeah 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 mm-hmm. but yeah i mean the- that's about it for the for the stuff I liked. Um, do you wanna you wanna say what some of the stuff you didn't like? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the movie again, not to give too much away. Um, I did mention earlier, spoiler alert, we had to spoil the kings. Um, that these actors and actresses, they at first they were doing this movie right, you know, mid pandemic, you know, because they were gonna, you know, make some money, right? Because what else do they do? They act. Um, but at some point they get kind of held hostage in their situation. They're not allowed to leave, and mm. so um, there was like <laughs> an evil. I don't. I wouldn't call him evil, but he seemed evil to me. Uh, the security guy, top yeah. security guy, he um, he starts like hurting people bad. <laughs> Somebody loses some fingers. I'm not gonna say who. Um, like just shot straight up, just shot like, and that whole bit like I I know what they were trying to do to keep him there and from leaving the hotel, but like I just thought that if you were gonna go the evil route. They should have like doubled down and really given him, I guess, more in the movie to to be mm-hmm. bad and like kind of maybe get you know power hungry or whatever. He was set up by um, 
by Kate McKinnon, who plays Paula, the kind of executive, you know, top uh, chairman of the whole project. Um, chairwoman, excuse me. Um, so, like, I feel like he, he should have done more as a bad guy and really kept them all, you know, sane, or not saying kept them all kept there. But mm-hmm. we get some people that, like, leave the set. Um, so, I don't know. It just, it was conflicting for me. If you're going to have a, a, a bad guy in a movie or a bad person, you got to make him look really bad, you know? Um, so, that they kind of missed a mark for me on that. Um, things I didn't like were the fact that the, the plot of the movie was just, like, I, I get it. It's, like, they're trying to do a parody thing, I feel like. But it was just in my opinion, not well done. The plot had the worst flow ever. Oh, like every, yeah. it, it, it had everyone's kind of dilemmas being, you know, just spat out on the screen, but there was no, they, they had a coming up together, but it just, it was awkward. Like, like Brian said, it was just so awkward. Just every scene was just awkward, awkward, funny, 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 awkward, awkward, awkward. It just, um, the flow of the movie was just trash to me. Yeah. It was just utter trash. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of one more thing. Um, that's probably about it. Uh, anything you want to kind of point out? Some of the bad stuff um, you remember? Yeah. So, so yeah. So right off the bat, I, I 100% agree with you with the the flow of it. Like the plot kind of, well, the plot was kind of stupid anyway. But just the flow of it was like, it felt like this, the actual movie stopped because of the pandemic. It felt like it was almost too different movies you know mm. uh, you know like because the the beginning part was serious but like you can kind of tell like are they're gonna get funny because they have all these funny actors and they're doing silly things but it just felt very serious and it felt like kind of like like when they first get there and like they don't know what to do with themselves for two weeks in a hotel room where they're waited on hand and foot so it's kind of like the pretentiousness of it was kind of like i get you're kind of making fun of celebrities being bored while they have unlimited fucking money you know so (laughs) so it's like i get that that he's trying to make fun of it but also like it just came off kind of like i don't care you know, and they even say that in the movie at one point, you know, where Karen Gillian is uh or Gillen is uh like asking for help. And then one of the the other the other girls, like the set girls, you know, was like, Oh, you just sound like a pretentious like crybaby. Which is true because that's what happened in the real world. Like all these celebrities are like, I don't know what to do in my twenty house, you know, twenty room mansion with a basketball court and swimming pool and you know three 30 acres you know it's like oh, what <laughs> you know so that but that that really like put me off and that kind of really slowed down me enjoying the movie because the middle when it started getting really goofy when it started getting goofy goofy and i i, I liked it and then the end which they even make fun of that <laughs> Because in, in one of the like little post credit scenes, they they say like, oh, oh, but the ending killed it. You know, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that's all that people remember. But it's kind of true, which is funny because like the beginning sucked, the middle was was okay, but the ending was just so silly and stupid that it kind of like I don't want to say redeemed it, but it just felt different. Like, but it also kind of ruined the flow of the movie. Like you said, it just it felt like they stopped filming mid way because of, of of the pandemic and then came back and they're like all right let's just finish this thing like i felt like the movie the fake movie was imitating the real movie or vice versa you know it was like you know, where the where the you know the lines got blurry that's funny but yeah. yeah that was that was my bit my my biggest issue was just like that beginning the beginning of this movie was boring 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 but if you can get past the beginning and get to the middle to the you know especially to the end when they started really doing funny goofy stuff you know i think you might enjoy it a little bit but yeah that's about it you know the funny parts are really funny but the beginning just killed it for me that was my that was my 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 the worst part i had mm-hmm. um yeah anything else that you remember i know you said you you you're thinking about one more yeah so um usually uh, this is a movie with a lot of stars right but i felt like th- there should have been in my opinion in my opinion there should have been like a main protagonist or someone to really 
be the hero. And I felt like it lacked that. They didn't have like a main person that the movie followed. It followed everyone. So I kind of yeah. got lost because of that too. Like yeah. it, it, it kind of was pointing towards Karen uh, Gillen, who played Carol Cobb. I feel like she was trying to be the main person in the movie, mm. but because you know you don't want to overshadow anyone else's roles, everyone felt like a main character, and that just it didn't do it for me. So that's I guess my last bugaboo. That uh, I I can see that I can see that. For me. Yeah, but I, I mean I I felt like yeah Karen Karen Gillen was like the main out of all of the this you know big cast. Cause, but yeah, I, I can see because like everyone else had like their own issues that definitely played a, a role in everything. So yeah, but now yeah. that's it. Um, cool. You want to get into our uh, ratings? Let's do it. All right. Oh, my mouse is playing around. All right, man. Uh, go ahead. And let right. me know. So over here at the Nerd Huddle, us spoiler kings like to review movies a little bit differently. We don't use the two thumbs up, two thumbs down. We don't do the five star rating system. We don't do any of that cliche nonsense. We like to do our own way. So if you see down below, where are they going to rate this movie? One of three ways. So it's either going to be a watch now, a watch later, or a watch never. A watch now means, hey, this movie is badass. It's so good. Top priority. Go see it right away because it's just phenomenal. A watch later means eh, the movie was okay. You know, you can put it on the back burner, not not top priority, and catch it when it comes out streaming, which it was streaming. Um, but you catch it later, later. It's not like that good, but it's okay. And then a watch never means don't give this movie any time of day. It was pure, utter trash. Don't give it any of your coins. Don't do it. So with that being said, uh, you kind of gave um, your rating um, in the previous movie we did in the stream. So if you don't mind if I go first uh, this yeah, time. Yeah, go for it, man. So uh, with the movie The Bubble, um, which they didn't really reference that too much. Um, they just really vaguely kind of was overall theme was being in a bubble. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a watch later. Um, it was so close to being a watch never, in my opinion. It was just the flow of the movie was just bad, 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 bad. But the thing that really kind of redeemed itself was just the many, many funny bits that the movie had. Not one liners, that it was actually funny little sections of the movie, and there were so many of them. It was just so funny, but I felt like because of having no flow to the movie or the plot, um, or little flow it was just it was just so lackluster um that's why it didn't get a now and then because it did entertain me enough to make me laugh kind of had me engaged a little bit in in the you know the whole show um i am gonna give it a later so yeah that's where i kind of stand with it what about you tink what do yeah. you get this movie man so that beginning part i was like this this is gonna be a never it's gonna be a never and then <laughs> Once the funny bits started kind of rolling in, that then they really started rolling in good, and I started like chuckling enough. And then it was just kind of like back to back little funny bits where I'm like, all right, so I'm I'm gonna give it a later, um, just just because of that, you know, just the funny little skits. I don't want to say skits, but little parts of it were really good. You know, it just sucks that there's this loose plot story kind of going on you know of them being in the bubble and and stuff like that where it's just you're kind of like i don't care about that i just want to see them all i want to see the best parts of this movie is when they're all together you know whenever it's yeah. just karen karen doing her stuff you, you feel sad for her and it brings the movie down you know and then you know whenever you see uh david the and leslie mann together same thing it's not that funny but when all of them are together it is good. Like the whole dancing part in in the in in the balcony area while like Beck is playing. Like <laughs> I don't even know if that's actually Beck or not, but it was just funny. <laughs> that, that was funny, and it's like when all of them together, like that's what made it funny. Mm. So yeah, so for me, it's definitely gonna be a uh, watch later. I'm gonna give that a watch later. Um, and unfortunately, that's we sad. can't really give you any uh. uh box office um but let me see what Ryan Ryan Tomatoes gave it when we do that we got a uh, it was a right Ryosaki hero on Twitch Ryosuke hey. hero yeah. hero what is what up is, um, thank Should you man all 
All right. So on Rotten Tomatoes, what did they give it? Oof. So the tomato meter, which is the critics, gave it a 24%. And then Oof. the audience gave it a 37 So Ooh, that's, that's a double whammy. The audience didn't like it and the critics didn't like it. Um, Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see some of the, the little reviews. There's only 76 it, critics now. Okay. Um, see one one person, Judd Apatow's uh, scatter shot direction, coupled with mostly annoying stars doing their silliest things, pretty much derails the film. Yeah, the satire is the is scatter shot, and the humor is often forced. Uh, but the anger feels authentic and personal. Ah, yeah, and that's the part that I didn't like. It's like these these actors being angry, you know, and it's like, ugh, yeah. Um, but yeah, a letdown just in every category. You know, it's uh somebody's uh this is a good one. Probably deserved uh to be a good twenty minutes shorter. Mm, okay. Um, but it still bears a distinctive mixture of cruelty and uh what was it Commis- commiseration? So but a lot, a lot, a lot of bad a lot of bad reviews on it. So yeah. I just I really thought this was gonna be good. I thought it was gonna be good, and instead they kind of took real life beats out of the mm-hmm. pandemic and did real life stuff. And I feel like when they didn't do real life stuff, like doing the drugs in the room and all of them getting high and stuff like that, that was funny. You know, stay stay yeah. away from real life, <laughs> like with something <laughs> like this. No one wants to be reminded out of the shitty situation that we're just getting out of. You know what I mean? It's like. And all, like, also another bad thing I forgot to say: this movie should have came out last year. It yeah. should have came out last year. It should not have came out twenty twenty two. Like we're over this. No one wants to talk about it anymore. I'm like, uh, granted, it's still a bad thing, but whether whatever side you're on, everyone's sick of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like everyone's sick of it. And you make yeah. a movie about it. If you made a movie about it and it came out last year, maybe it would have done better. Because I think emotions of it were still like you know everyone felt a certain way but now everyone feels like let's let, you know spider-man came out you know let, let's go back to the theaters let's let's do stuff you know and then this movie kind of reminded you like oh yeah remember it sucked I'm like yeah no shit <laughs> so, uh but well, yeah, so anything I, else man yeah uh, i i agree i agree that this movie if it would have came out like mid pandemic, very end of the pandemic, that would have been way greater comedic timing. Then I think it would have popped more. It would have gotten better reviews. I, I, I totally agree with the fact that you said that it just reminds you of the things that sucked. So for that, it makes it kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth trying to watch this movie. So yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know. You you don't. Imagine somebody making a Holocaust film like right after it happened. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. I mean, I guess you really can't make. Well, I guess you could because Taika Waititi kind of did it. You know, with with with. Yeah, you know, I would say you can't really make it funny, but you know, he did it. But it's also been a, it's been a long time um, right. since it's happened. Right. Not long time, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's just like I don't know. I mean, it's it's, it's hard to compare it to stuff like that. You know, but. Yeah. Just no one wants to be reminded of the shit situation, you know, especially mm-hmm. when you're still kind of feeling some. A lot of people are feeling the ramifications of it all, you know, of being shut down and, you know, losing work, this and that, all the other shit. So, yeah, I just yep. I, I just wish they should have they should have made fun of it more rather than too much real life. Yeah, so. I agree. Um, But cool, man. Anything else? Um, Nah, that's it for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm I'm there, I'm there too. And then uh, if you're watching on replay, thank you. We we uh, we like it. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the sub button. We're on our way to 200, so uh, at 200 we'll do another like kind of giveaway, something cool too. And then uh, yeah, man, we'll appreciate it. And then have you guys come in every Monday and Wednesday. We go live and we talk about TV and movies, all that good stuff. And then if you're into sports, make sure you check out the Nerd Huddle. Link is in the description. Nerd Huddle and Dynasty Pylon. You know, if you're into football, you want to check those channels out. We're all part of the Nerd Huddle production family here. Now, nah, just check out the links down below. Um, follow us everywhere. We got a ton of great content Monday through Friday, Thursday. 
Sunday through Thursday. Sunday through Sunday, Sunday through Thursday. Sunday through Wednesday. <laughs> we got content. We got content. Yeah. Just uh, make sure you check out the links. Follow, like. Oh yeah! Thank you for the the logos, uh, Braden. Right? Yeah. Um, those are looking sweet. But yeah, just check out the links. Um, share this with your friends. If we made you laugh, maybe we earned the liked. Maybe we earned the share button. I don't know. But uh, thank you for everybody joining in, leaving a comment, just saying hi, just saying happy, happy Monday. Just kind of makes our day. So thank you so much. We love you all. Cool. See you guys later. Deuces.